Today in our 2015 Ram 2500, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you how to install the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Air Helper Springs with internal Jones bumpers for the rear axle. Part number AO88289. That's what our airbags look like when they're installed. It's going to be a hybrid spring style system, which means that it's going to provide you with not only an adjustable airbag, but it's gonna have a built-in internal jound stop. The internal jound stop is gonna prevent the vehicle from bottoming out when the bags are at a lower air level. What's nice about these bags is they can be inflated and deflated independently to adjust for any off-center load you may have in the back of the vehicle. They can be adjusted anywhere from five to 100 PSI, and they're gonna have a 5,000 pound load carrying capacity or weight carrying capacity. Keep in mind that weight carrying capacity does not increase the load carrying or weight carrying capacity of the vehicle. You always want to go with a recommended manufacturer's recommendations of the vehicle. What's going to set these apart from other from other suspension enhancement systems out there like your Timberins and your Sumo Springs is that these are adjustable. The Sumo Springs and Timberins uh, once you install them, there's, even though there's no maintenance, you can't adjust them any for heavier loads. These you can adjust per your load and adjust them side to side and are built for heavy duty use, like your three quarter ton and one ton vehicles. We need to take a measurement to find out what our normal ride height is without any weight in the back of the vehicle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from here, straight down the center of the wheel to the ground. Here at the back wheels, we're at right at about 43 inches. Now let's do the same thing with the front. Here at the front, we're at 40 and a half. Now it's a good idea to take note of those measurements. Now we've added about 1,500 pounds to the back of our truck. Let's go ahead and take that measurement again on the front and the back of the vehicle. Again, center of the wheel to the bottom edge here. Looks like we're at about 41, so we've dropped our back two inches. Let's take a measurement of the front and see if our front raised. It looks like our front is about the same at 40 and a half. Now, that's only with 1,500 pounds on it. If we add more weight, the front of that is gonna raise up more. What that's gonna do, cause our headlights to raise, not facing the road. It's gonna make our steering really light. It's gonna affect our braking, and it's gonna make our tires wear unevenly. With a heavy load in the back of the vehicle, and without a suspension upgrade. What this is gonna do, it's gonna cause our rear axle to make up for what our suspension can't handle. It's gonna put unnecessary stress on our rear axle, causing issues down the road. That's gonna make it much easier for your installation if you remove your spare tire. First thing we need to do, is we need to raise up our vehicle and let our axle hang. <clears throat> on each side, we're gonna have a bump stop. We're gonna have a bolt on each side we're going to take a 15 millimeter socket, we're going to remove those bolts and remove our bump stop. First we're going to install the caps. They're going to notice the indention. That's going to face down at the bag. We're going to have three holes, we're going to line them up with the three holes on the bag. You're going to have an air fitting. It's an L bracket like this, or an L fitting like this. Go ahead and thread that into, we're gonna thread it in finger tight. We'll take a half inch wrench, and we're gonna turn it one and a half times. Start here, one and a half. So everything we do on the driver's side, passenger side is gonna be opposite. So now we're going to take our bag, we're going to face our fitting toward us. We're going to take the plate that looks like this. We want the large hole in the extended part of the plate or the plate that sticks out more past the bag toward our left hand. Now we'll take a small carriage bolt and we're going to go into this back corner like this. And the plate is actually going to hold it in. Now we're gonna have two different size Allen head bolts. We're gonna take the shorter of the two. We'll have two of them for each side. 
and we're going to thread those through the plate into the top of the bag. We're going to torque those down to the specifications and the instructions. Next we're going to have a large thick washer like this. In our bracket we're going to have two round holes, two square holes on the outside. This plate is actually going to go onto the bottom of our bag. So we want to make sure that that washer is on the same side as this square hole on our top bracket. So we're going to take our bracket, we're going to flip it over like this, make sure that where we install it's going to be on the right side. We're going to be installing it right here. We'll throw it on the bottom. You can see how the bracket kind of uh, has two tabs on it. Take our hex bolt, flat washer, we're going to go through the bottom like this, and then we're going to put a lock nut on the top. And we'll tighten that into place. Next, on the bottom side of our bag, we're going to have our second cap. Again, you want to make sure the cup side is facing down. And you'll notice it has a large hole. Uh, on this side, it really doesn't matter. I usually line it up with the cutout and the sticker. As long as you have these two holes lined up uh, to put the hardware into the bag, it'll, it's just fine. And we'll take our two long carriage bolts. We're going to go through like this. You'll notice it's indented there. You want to make sure that the thread side is going is coming out towards them like that. And then it's going to sit right on top. We'll take two short flat uh, Allen head bolts and they're going to thread down through the plate. Once you get them in, we're going to torque them to the specifications and the instructions. So now with our bag installed, we'll set it aside. We're going to take our plate that looks like this. So you'll know if you have it right. The oblong hole is going to face, or we're going to go to the back hole. Uh, you notice if we put it like this, how that sticks out. Uh, let's see if you can see it here. How oh, that sticks out over here by the tire. We flip it over, it's gonna line up even with the bracket. Or the same direction, I should say. So it'll be just like that. Take our bolts, go ahead and thread them into place. We'll line up our small hole with our other hole here. Thread that into place. Then we go ahead and tighten and torque the hardware to the specifications and the instructions. So now we're going to take our bag. This plate is going to be the bottom where our two long bolts are. The bolts are going to go on each side of our jump stop plate. Uh, our bracket or our L bracket air fitting is going to face toward the outside. It's going to go up through this large hole in the bracket we just installed. We're going to take that bolt, we're going to go right up through this hole and this plate we have installed on our frame. And our air fitting is going to go right up through that large hole. We're going to put a flat washer on and a lock nut. Just like that. There's another square hole. It's going to be on the front corner up here. We're going to install another bolt flat washer and nut in that. We'll go ahead and tighten these two bolts, this one here on the back and the one on the front. We'll use our 9 16 wrench to do it. Uh, it can be hard to use a socket because we have our frame rail here. For this carriage bolt up here, you just want to make sure you pay attention to the instructions and torque that down once you've got it installed. Once you've got that torque installed, what we're going to do is we're going to lower our axle back down so that this bottom plate sits on our bump stop plate here. We're going to go ahead and let it all the way down. 
to normal. And we're gonna take a large bracket like this. If you see how it's uh, cut out, U-shaped kinda. This rounded edge, oops, this rounded edge is gonna face up towards the axle. We're gonna take our bolts and we're gonna go through each of the two holes. And we're gonna put on a flat washer and then a lock nut on each side. We'll go ahead and tighten those down. We wanna make sure we tighten them evenly so our bracket is not pulling to one side or the other. We wanna tighten that up, flat up against the bottom of the axle. And you're gonna to torque them to the specifications and the instructions. You're gonna have one single airline tube that's gonna have one end, actually the two ends are gonna have a fitting like this, but it's gonna be one solid one. What you're gonna do is take those two fittings, put them up next to each other, find the center, and then cut the line in half. That's gonna give you your line for each side. When you cut your line, you just wanna make sure it's flat, it's not uh, kinked or pinched. And we're gonna insert this end in, into our air fitting on top of our bag. We're gonna push it in until it stops. And then we'll give it a little tug to make sure it's inserted. We're gonna take our line, I'm gonna route it. We're gonna route it up and out of the way, so I'm gonna go actually up over top of my frame rail. This side, I can actually come underneath. Uh, passenger side, you're not gonna be able to because the exhaust is there. You have to go over the top. This side, I'm gonna come under like this though. And then we have some existing wiring here. We're gonna route it right to the back bumper of the vehicle. We'll just take our zip ties that come in our kit, zip tie it right to that line. Keep in mind, we have our spare tire that's gonna go up here, so we, want, we don't wanna run underneath. So, uh, just make sure you go over the braces where the spare tire is gonna go. And you can see we're gonna have a little bit of extra, so we can just wind it up like this, because we need this end to go outside on the vehicle. We can just kind of bundle it up, uh, once we get our lines where we want them to go, how we're gonna do is our Schrader valves are gonna come right here. You got several different places you can put them. You can put them here, you can put them in your wheel well, you can put them inside of your, uh, underneath your gas tank lid. Uh, most people that we install for like them back here. You can put them sideways. So you got your driver's side and passenger side, you can put them up and down. Uh, just make sure when you drill that there's nothing back behind it. Take a 5 16th drill bit and drill our holes. Now we're gonna take our airline tube. Just make sure you grab the right side. First, we're gonna put on a nut that looks like this. So go ahead and screw it all the way down to the end. Then we're gonna put on a star washer. We're gonna insert it through our hole. Like that. We're gonna put on a rubber washer, flat washer, and then a nut on the outside. And then you can tighten the two nuts together. Now we can go back underneath, tidy up any extra airline hose we have, and zip tie it to uh, any existing wiring that we already have under there. Next we're gonna add about 30 PSI into each bag. Next we're gonna take some soapy water, we're gonna check for any air leaks. We're gonna spray our fittings here. Um, we also wanna spray the end of our airline tubes where they're connecting into the top of our bags. What we're looking for is large bubbles. We don't have any there, so we're good. Once you've completed your installation, you can reinstall your spare tire, you're ready to go. Now with our airbags installed, we have about 66 pounds of pressure in our vehicle, 1,500 pounds of weight in the back of the truck. 
We're gonna take another measurement and see where we're at. We're right back at our normal ride height. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the Airlift Low Lifter 5000 Ultimate Air Helper Spring with internal down bumpers for the rear axle, part number AL88289 on our 2015 Ram 2500.